Hello. In this lecture, we'll derive the one-dimensional wave equation from the physical principles. And this wave equation can be used to describe the motion of a vibrating string of length L, among other things. And if the density of the string is the same throughout its length, and if the string is held fixed at both ends at x equals 0 and x equals L, then its motion can be modeled with the PDE written down here. And in the model, the function u denotes the vertical displacement of the string at the spatial coordinate x and at time t, as shown in the figure we've ha we have on the slide. And in the PDE, the quantity c, shown here, is called the wave speed and it depends on the density and the tension of the string. And we will see in a later lecture that this quantity really describes the speed of propagation of waves in the string. And we should also note that the wave equation has two separate initial conditions. One for the initial displacement of the string and one for the initial velocity, which is given by the derivative of the displacement with respect to time. And we need these two separate conditions due to the fact that the PDE includes the second order derivative with respect to time, as opposed to the heat equation, which only included the first order derivative with respect to time. And we will use Newton's second law of motion in deriving the wave equation. And in the derivation, we'll make some simplifying assumptions. First, we assume that the density of the string is constant throughout its length, and its weight is relatively small, so we can ignore the effect of gravity on the displacement. We also assume that the considered oscillations are small, so that the length of the string stays approximately constant, the slopes of the string at every point are relatively small, and that at each point the string moves mainly in the vertical direction. And finally we assume that the string itself does not resist bending, and the tension in the horizontal direction is roughly constant at all times. We begin by considering a small segment of the string as shown in the figure on the slide. And we want to apply the Newton's second law, which states that the mass times the vertical acceleration of the piece of the string is equal to the sum of the vertical forces acting on it. And if we consider a small enough segment, then the acceleration in the vertical direction is roughly equal to the second partial derivative of the displacement u with respect to the time t. And if we denote the mass density of the string by rho, then the mass of the piece of the string is simply rho times delta x. And this way we arrive at the formula shown here. And here f is the total vertical force of acting on the segment of the string, and this force arises from the difference in the vertical components of the tensions at x and at x plus delta x. To get to the vertical components of the tensions, we first denote by tau the total tension at a point x and at time t. And this tau is the scalar total magnitude of the tension and at both coordinates x and at x plus delta x the direction of the tension is along the tangent of the string at that point. And these directions are given by the angle theta that the tangent of the string makes with the horizontal direction. And on the other hand, we also know that the tangent of this angle gives us the slope of the string at this coordinate and in turn this is equal to the 
partial derivative of the displacement with respect to x at these coordinates. And this way we have the identity given in the middle of the slide. And our main aim is to compute the sum of the vertical components of the tension. And we can do this by first comp computing the vertical tension at the coordinate x plus delta x, which is given by the total magnitude of the tension times the sine of the angle that the tangent of the string makes with the horizontal direction. And then we will subtract the vertical tension at x, which is obtained in a similar way. And this gives us the following formula for the total force arising from the difference in tensions acting on the piece of the string. We assumed in the beginning that the horizontal tension in the string is roughly constant and we can denote this quantity by tau HOR. And if we express the horizontal components of the total tensions at the coordinates x and x plus delta x, then we can see that the total tension tau times cosine of the angle at both of these coordinates must be equal to this quantity tau hor. And in our formula for the vertical forces, we had the total tension tau times the sine instead of the cosines. But we can now do a simple computation where we aim to express the parts of the vertical tension using the horizontal tensions. And we can do this by writing the sine of theta as a product of cosine and a tangent. And this way we can see that the quantity we are looking at is given by the constant tau hor times the tangent of theta. And we can also recall from the previous slide that the tangent of theta was actually equal to the derivative of the displacement of u with respect to x. And this way we get to the final form on the slide. The computation we did on the previous slide implies that the vertical tensions at x and at x plus delta x can both be expressed using the constant horizontal tension tau HOR and the derivatives of the displacements with respect to x as shown here in the middle of the slide. And if we now combine these two formulas with the expression for the total vertical force, we arrive at the following very simple formula for the total force F. And we can now go back to the Newton's second law, which related the total vertical force F with the second partial derivative of U with respect to time T. And if we use our formula for F and divide both sides with rho and delta X, we arrive at the second equation on the slide. And we assume that the length of the segment we're looking at delta x was small and if we let it approach zero in the equation then the ratio on the right hand side becomes the second order partial derivative with respect to x of u. We can now see that what we arrive at is precisely the one dimensional wave equation. And in addition from the equation we can also see that the square of the wave speed c is actually given by the two physical parameters, the horizontal tension of the string divided by its mass density.